So Pangu may very well be the Chinese equivalent of Abraxas as he creates ultimate good, Yang, and ultimate evil, Yin. This is a good Eastern symbolism which we'll, we'll review a few from, from the West. We also look at, once again, the fact that a Chthonic deity is always and forever linked to the Earth. Abraxas is a Chthonic deity as well. If we can consider the abyss from which Pangu and Abraxas make their point of origin a qualifier for Earth, as Earth in its primal, most latent form, which sheds truth on spirit as fundamental of matter. Okay? So, Pangu is a primordial being and creation figure in Chinese mythology who separated heaven and earth and became geographic features such as mountains and rivers. So, it's the embodiment of all things that are physical and material, yet it was the firstborn of those things, okay? So, getting into the etymology, okay, um, and I'm going to approach... There are ver there are various words that uh, come out of the glyphs, but I'm gonna approach the words that I utilize the most here. Okay, um, the word to build is in the first glyph because it's it's two glyphs. Okay, to build, or and then also expressing circularity or data comprises all the rest of the uh, words that are in the first glyph. Okay. And then the second glyph links to the idea of original, okay, and first, okay. So from to build, we get the idea of genitor or generating, okay. And then from the first, we get the idea of the word pro, first, per, in the Proto-Indo-European, okay, meaning first, ancient, okay. Now... From pro and genitor, we get pro genitor, okay? So the name Pangu is the word pro genitor, or in the Greek, protogonos, which means firstborn. In Hebrew, this word is bakar, which means firstborn, and also means to bear new fruit, as in the idea of be ye fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, right? Which was told to the first uh, couple, if you will, Adam and Eve, who were created by mitosis from the origin of all creation being uh, God, if you will. You know what I mean? But we know about the idea of Abraxas, the God above God. Okay, so this, this one being would be uh, something also, too, that represents perfect wholeness because there's circularity in the first name, okay, which has the idea of to coil, uh, also a plate, which is circular, a dish or a vessel, okay, and then we also have um, some of the other words within the other glyphs as you break them down, the word ten, which is perfect, uh, uh, also mouth, gateway, entry, port, okay? So possible gleanings from the glyphs. And I wish I could get into all the voluminous words that came out of this, but we have not the time, okay? So um, 10 vessels conveyed by a mouth spoken, okay? That's the idea of Kabbalah. Just, just w within that there okay or 10 vessels at the gateway we also have uh perfect which is the 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 number 10 for the chinese means perfect okay um perfect the circularity of the vessel of the plate circularity thus wholeness perfect circularity or wholeness making an entrance or coming into being okay and this is the idea too that Jung put out in aeon of the Anthropos Rotundum, okay, or the whole or perfect man or the circular man, okay, we have that idea being posited as well here, okay. I also wrote that um, the word Bereg and 
there was a control word that I used, which was fringe, that came out of uh, the Proto Indo European. There's a, a method that I used to do this, okay? And uh, this is the idea that a fractal rectifies and sums up this myth as all parts are of the whole, self same in their separateness. They are the whole. If you look at a piece of a fractal, it represents the whole of the fractal, okay? I'm talking about a Mandelbrot's fractal, you know, for instance, okay, if you want to go and look that up, okay? Um, and for those that are into gematria, I'll possibly put this up, but um, Bakar in Hebrew is Beth is 2, Kaf is 20, Resh is 200, 222. 2 times 111, 111 being the self, wholeness, 2 being the visualization of that, the visual image of that. And um, Pangu also, as Abraxas, has links to uh, the god Pan as well, too, or Dionysus, okay? So uh, that's just a, another link if you want to do some side study on those deities, okay? And I would urge you to look at the story of how, um, I think it was either Dionysus or Pan, same deity, they were, it was uh, uh, ripped up by the Titans and um, was uh, resurrected, okay? And you can see how Pan representing the whole being torn apart, separated, and then brought back together. I mean, that almost brings back uh, uh, ideas of the, the Osirian myth uh, from Egyptology. But anyways, the legend of Pangu um, goes like this. The first writer to record the myth of Pangu was Zhu Zheng during the Three Kingdoms period. Recently, his name was found in a tomb dated AD 156. Um, in the beginning, there was nothing, and the universe was in a fe featureless, formless, primordial state. This primordial state coalesced into a cosmic egg for about 18,000 years. Within it, the perfectly op opposed principles of yin and yang became balanced, and Pangu emerged or woke up from the egg. That waking up idea almost speaks of uh, enlightenment if you will, consciousness, pure consciousness, okay? Pangu inside the cosmic egg symbolizes Tai Ji, which comes after Wu Ji, okay? Pangu is usually depicted as a primitive hairy giant who has horns on his head, much like Pan, right? Uh, Pangu began, began creating the world. He separated yin from yang with a swing of his giant axe, creating earth, murky yin, and the sky, clear yang. And we were talking about those opposites and these opposites are being represented in that form by murky yin and clear yang sky and earth okay to keep them separated pangu stood between them and pushed up the sky so him doing this was just like the egyptian myth of shu between geb and newt and also sothis and hathor hold the sky up okay in the Egyptian myth, so you can look at them and probably gain something more on this whole idea as well, too. Um, and the fact of holding up the sky from the earth creates a space, uh, an empty space, if you will, that consciousness can begin to create all types of uh, multitudinous things, okay? It creates space for growth, okay? So with each day, the sky grew 10 feet, three meters higher, the earth 10 feet thicker, and Pangu 10 feet taller. This task took another 1,800 years, or 18,000 years. That's, that's, hopefully I said 18,000 years uh, for the primordial state, for uh, basically to coalesce the cosmic gate. That took 18,000 years. This task took another 18,000 years for the growth. In some versions of the story, Pangu is aided in this task by four most prominent beasts, namely the turtle, the keelin, the phoenix, and the dragon. So we see the four being associated with this one, which creates a, a pentagram. Pangu, in this instance, being the quintessence, okay? So, after 18,000 years had elapsed, Pangu died. His breath became the wind, mist, and clouds. His voice, thunder. His left eye, the sun. His right eye, the moon. His head, the mountains. Extremes 
of the world, his blood rivers, his muscles fertile land, his facial hair, the stars and Milky Way, his fur, the bushes and forests, his bones, valuable minerals, his bone marrow, precious jewels, his sweat, rain, and the fleas on his fur carried by the wind became animals. <clears throat> now, I was going to read this one, uh, uh, but I said the African progenitory Nomo, that's N-O-M-M-O, -M -M -O, has a story similar to Pangu, and is said to have come down to the earth in an arc of sorts, which is intimated in the simple Chinese characters in the name Pangu. If you break down the, the name of Pangu, the, the kanji, you'll find an idea of a boat or a vessel in there as well, though, too. So there's a, lots of allusions to other pangenitor story de uh, uh, of deities, okay? So the origin. Three main views describe the origin of the Pangu myth. The first is that the story is indigenous and was developed or transmitted through time to Zhu Zheng. Uh, senior scholar Wei Zhujian states that the Pangu story is derived from stories during the Western Zhu dynasty. He cites the story of Zhang and Li in the Chu Yu section of the ancient classics Gu Yu. In it, King Zhao of Chu asked Guan Shefu a question. What did the ancient classic Zhu Shu mean by the sentence that Zhang and Li caused the heaven and earth to disconnect from each other? The Zhu Zhu sentence he refers to is about the earlier person Lu Xing, who converses with King Mu of Zhu. King Mu's reign is much earlier and dates to about 1001 to 946 BC. In their conversation, they discuss a disconnection between heaven and earth. Dirk Bade linked the myth to the ancestral mythologies of the Miao people and Yao people in southern China. This is how Professor King Nai Chang, head of Guangxi Institute for National Nationality Studies, reconstructs the true creation myth preceding the myth of Pangu. Note it that it is not actually a creation myth. A brother and sister became the only survivors of the prehistoric deluge by crouching in a gourd that floated on the water. The, the two got married afterwards, and a mass of flesh in the shape of a whetstone was born. They chopped it, and the pieces turned into large crowds of people who began to reproduce again. The couple were named Pan and Gu in the, Zhua, the Zhuang ethnic language, which stands for whetstone and gourd, respectively. Now, this myth, they're also talking about um, the two that I spoke of earlier in my listings, uh, Nuwa and Fuji, that is one of their mythical stories. And um, here's something else about the, the, the mass of flesh that they chopped up that turned into large crowds of people who, who began to reproduce again. Watch this. The prehistorical, the prehistoricity and immor, immor, immortality and divisibility from itself, even after forcefully being divided, um, all attributes uh, are attributes of the flatworms. A planarian worm is linked perfectly with this idea. The fact that the story of the brother sister pair here, like Bay and Gabricus myth, in, uh, and that's uh, from um, that's an alchemical myth in explaining Panku. The fact that this is a primordial idea in which several primordial ideas project perfectly uh, describes the fact that we are dealing with a myth and character central to the original state. This is def de definitely of solutio imagery, which can be of a physical, watery nature. Yet if we think of the spiritual water, we find the root of being before all was created being described. The liquid is mercurious of three and also 1,000 names. The unconscious psyche, the mysterious psychic substance. Keep in mind when Gabricus disappears in the body of his sister, he is transformed into atoms. The water, the unconscious psyche, kills and vivifies. This story depicts the conjunctio of soul and luna, which is impossible without the, ma the watery agent of the soul which holds them together. This water slash soul is the dove in the Rosarium Philosophorum pictures, love or desire. And that dove is also 
linked in the uh, uh, the uh, Gnostic idea of Abraxas, which we read about earlier he <clears throat> here. Um, that is part of three other portions that were talked about in the Seven Sermons of the Dead of Carl Gustav Jung. So the origin now. Three main views describe the origin of the Pangu myth. First is the story... Okay, no, so I just read that, sorry. 19th century comparative religion scholar Paul Karras writes this, Pangu, the basic idea of the Yi philosophy is so convincing that it almost obliterated the Taoist cosmology of Pangu, who is said to have chiseled the world out of rocks of eternity. Though this legend is not held in high honor by the literati, it contains some features of interest which have not as yet been pointed out and deserves at least an initial comment, an incidental comment. Pangu is written in two ways. One means in literal translation, translations basin ancient, the other basin solid. Both are homophones. For example, they are pronounced the same way and the former may be preferred as the original and correct spelling. Obviously, the name means aboriginal abyss, or in the Terser German Ugrun, and we have reason to believe it to be a translation of the Babylonian Tiamat the Deep. Um, and I know as the Deep, this is the obvious point in creation or stage where the elements were in a confused mixture, and by the Spirit of God, the And by the Spirit of God, it was subjected to separatio and coagulation, or coagulatio, right? The Chinese legend tells us that Pan Ku's bones changed to rocks, his flesh to earth, his marrow, teeth, and nails to metals, his hair to herbs and trees, his veins to rivers, his breath to wind, and his forelimbs became pillars marking the four corners of the world which is a Chinese version not only of the Norse myth of the giant Ymir, but also of the Babylonian story of Tiamat. And also I wrote as a note, Tezcatlipoca and, Tezcatlipoca and Quetzalcoatl versus Sipakli. It is also enlightening to know that there is no part of you or I that is not part of the gods as the perfected Egyptian is made to proclaim as recorded upon ancient papyri. This points to the fact that also that there really is no difference, no you or me, just I, I. Everyone is I, it's one. But because of the bodies, we perceive this as I. So there is a perceived differentiation and separation, okay? So illustrations of Panku represent him in the company of supernatural animals that symbolize old age or immortality. For example, the tortoise and the crane, sometimes also the dragon, the emblem of power, and the phoenix, the emblem of bliss. When the earth had thus been shaped from the body of Panku, we are told that three great rivers successively governed the world. First the celestial, then the terrestrial, finally the human sovereign. They were followed by Yung Cheng and Sui Jin. For example, fire, the fireman, later uh, being the Chinese Prometheus, who brought the fire down from heaven and taught man its various uses. And this, I wrote, this calls to mind the three streams, the, the three great rivers that successively govern the world. This calls to mind the three streams flowing from the spout in the first picture of the Rosarian Philosophorum, which fount is Mercurius and also is the stone, um, which is Aven Shatia from when celestial waters of salvation flow, knowledge or gnosis, right? The Prometheus myth is not in indigenous to Greece where it received the artistically classical form under which it is best known to us. The name which by an ingenious afterthought is explained as the forethinker is originally the Sanskrit paramanta, and means troller or fire stick being the rod of hard wood which is pr which produce fire by rapid rotation in a piece of soft wood now this is the idea of the male and the feminine being unified shiva and shakti okay so we see that that even this even in this myth 
the opposites are brought together in unity from the start, from the start here. You see what I'm saying? So Pongu is a good representation of Abraxas, okay, from another another uh, uh, ethnic tradition, if you will. We cannot deny that the myth must have been known and also in Mesopotamia, the main center of civilization between India and Greece. And it becomes probable that the figure of Sweet Jan has been derived from the same prototype as the Greek Prometheus. Or maybe I put the Greeks learn of this Promethean Sweet Jan ar archetype from the East, who enlightens and shows how to use that light which flows from the three great rivers or the light disseminating stone of an Hashetia, the stone of foundation, which is Dayath, knowledge or gnosis, which sits right in the center of the tree of life um, in the, the area of the realm of the archetypes, okay? So the missionary and translator James Leggy discusses Pangu, and I talk about how the missionaries were all up there in China, so we, we even have to worry about the validity and the, the the full content that was brought down to us from those sources and um that idea once again is visited in uh the um the secret of the golden flower by uh charles wilhelm and carl jung as i spoke about earlier okay panku is spoken of by the common people as the first man you see how they christianize it now okay Panku is spoken of by the common people as the first man who opened up heaven and earth. It has been said to me in Pidgin English that he is all the same. You're Adam. And in Tower's picture books, I have seen him as a shaggy, dwarfish Hercules developing from a bear rather than an ape and wielding an immense hammer and chisel, which he is breaking the chaotic rocks. World forming is a sublimatio action. Okay. <clears throat> So, other Chinese creation myths. The Pangu myth appears to have been preceded in ancient Chinese literature by the existence of Shangdi or Taiyi, of the Taiyi Sheng Shui. Other Chinese myths, such as those of Nuwa and the Jade Emperor, try to explain how people were created and do not necessarily explain the creation of the world. There are many variations of these myths. In Boye culture, according to Boye mythology, after Pangu became an expert in rice farming after creating the world, he married the daughter of the dragon queen, and their union gave rise to the Boye people. The daughter of the dragon king and Pangu had a son named Xin, Jin Heng. When Jin Heng disrespected his mother, she returned to heaven and never came down, despite the repeated pleas of her husband and son. Pangu was forced to remarry and eventually died on the sixth day of the sixth month of the lunar calendar. Jin Heng's stepmother treated him badly and almost killed him. When Jin Heng threatened to destroy her rice harvest, she realized her mistake. She made peace with him, and they went on to pay their respects to Pangu annually on the sixth day of the sixth month of the lunar calendar. This day became an important traditional Buye holiday for ancestral uh, worship. Uh, a Yahwist that I knew claimed that the sixth day of the sixth month of the lunar calendar is actually the birthday of Christ, but they're conjectured. Uh, dates on what that birthday actually is, including December 25th, so whatever. The, link, the legend of creation is one of the main characteristics that distinguishes the Boye from the Zhuang. Worship. Pangu is worshipped at a number of, tr of shrines in contemporary China, usually with Taoist symbols such as the Bagua. The Pangu King Temple, built in 1809, is located in the Guangdong province, northwest of Huada District, north of Shilling Town at the foot of Pangu King Mountain. The Huada District is located north of Guangzhou to the west of Baiyun International Airport, just in case you guys want to go and visit it. How about that? So... Let us take a look. And I think the story of Nuwa and Fuji. Ah, and it's such a beautiful story. I would want to read it. 
and I, I wrote so many notes to this, but truthfully and honestly, what I think I'll do is I, I will put a picture up of Fu, Fuji and Nuwa because it links to the list of correspondences that I threw out there corresponding to these uh, uh, deities. Um, and as they are progenitor deities as well, though, too. Um, but you will see just just on looking the at them, the relation to them Im in their imagery to Abraxas. And the fact that uh, that I could continue to hammer home here, I could continue to hammer home here. I have uh, several other pages here that I could read about uh, the about Wuji, uh, Taiji, the Yin Yang, and everything else, but. I think that we have sufficiently covered this. I could continue to tell it to you again, and there will be another hour that will be on this video. But one thing that I will will read from the last of these pages, okay, is a suspicion that I have that is is continue has con had you know as I was reading about the uh, the. Chinese idea or deities of Abraxas, I mean, that, that link to Abraxas in so many ways, right? As I was reading about these ideas, I just kept running into the fact that in the West, we utilize a lot of their symbology, and I'm talking about early on before the ideas got to us really in the West. They had been used. And I, I think that Eastern ideas made it to us before we, in this time, as we're looking into, you know, books that people have written, you know, almost a hundred years ago or whatever, the, the Chinese influence was already in Western culture long ago. And I mean, keep in mind, you know, uh, uh, with fireworks and herbs and spices and a lot of trading that was going on uh, uh, in the East um, as pertained to European individuals, you know, there, there, there obviously had to be uh, uh, interest in their beliefs, interest in what what their mindsets were, and there were individuals with scientific minds that were compiling information on on these things and uh this is probably how we receive some of the uh ideas so without further idea i'm going to read a portion of this paper that is is titled similar symbols similar symbols in the in the european lands to uh symbols in china okay and possibly this may further solidify a link that may show by paying attention to the years that um, in Gnostic ideas, in alchemical ideas, uh, um, that it's possible that this information was gleaned from further east than we think. You know, we tend to, to look at Egypt. Oh, you know, like Egypt. Yeah, man. You know, like it, it all must have came from Egypt. But I think China might have had a, a large influence on the alchemical ideas and on the uh, Gnostic ideas, then we even know, you know, uh, meaning the Bible has to have those influences as well within it as well. So um, similar symbols, and I'm going to show a picture of this. This is a shield pattern of the Western Roman infantry unit called the Armigeri Defensoris Senioris. And it is circa AD 430, okay? And that's saying Anno Domini in the year of our Lord, uh, CE, Christian era, 430, right? It's very, very early, okay? Um, similarities can be seen in Neolithic uh, into the Enneo 
Lithic era. Cucuteni uh, Tripilia culture on the territory of current Ukraine and Romania. Patterns containing ornament looking like Taiji 2, which is the yin and yang from archaeological artifacts of that culture, were displayed in, in, in the Ukraine pavilion at the Expo 2010 in Shanghai, China. The interlocking design is found in artifacts of the European Iron Age. Similar interlocking designs are found in the Americas. Shikalkolikulki. That's obviously um, a uh, Aztec, an Aztec name. Okay. Um, while this design appears to become a standard ornamental motif in Iron Age Celtic culture, by the third century BC found so third century BC. While this design appears to become a standard ornamental motif in Iron Age Celtic culture, by the third century BC found on a wayside, I mean found on a wide variety of artifacts, it is not clear what symbolic value was attached to it. Unlike the Chinese symbol, the Celtic yin-yang lacked the element of mutual penetration. And the two halves are not always portrayed in different colors. Comparable designs are also found in Etruscan art. Now, I wrote something on this because this is a Western assimilated symbol from the East. The Easterners displayed this symbol in a certain way for a certain meaning. And the Westerners took it and did their own thing with it, obviously, as you will see. And it, I really believe that in manipulating the symbol, whether or not they, they had uh, uh, underlying meaning or motive to it, okay, you can look at symbology and if you understand enough about it, you can find out what the meaning of the symbol could mean by other understandings of the symbolic meanings of things. Okay. And I wrote this and I said, symbolically, this and by this, I mean the, the picture or pictures of the uh, yin yang ideas that were used in the more towards the west of China, okay? Symbolic symbolically, this points to the one-sided tendencies in dualism which we have psychologically inherited here in the west. They were present in our geographical ancestors as the aforementioned presents as early as 3 BC, 3rd century BC. The lack of penetration in the yin-yang halves and the, you know, noted by the colors, point to the symbolic psychological idea that a clear line had been drawn between qualities setting a ripe ground for oppression and repression of multiple opposite qualities as perceived by the champions of the polar opposites of such qualities so there 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 was already your side my side me and then it's you guys over there there that was already over here because of the way that they treated a symbol that had complex unity in duality okay unity of opposites one side of an opposite working towards the, the 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 other side of an opposite okay so um the chinese uh Taoists obviously had a better and more clear idea of the opposites as being in constant flux one lending its cause to the effect of the other yin and yang for instance right but the infiltration of the more sage-like and primitive idea of the Tao with the import and influence by the need for its integration with the model of Chinese society gave rise to Taoist Confucianism and the arrival of Christianized priests and the like to China and the East at large no doubt gave us an ability to look into translated texts of Eastern origin, yet most possibly under seriously mangled and abridged form due to the priesthood's well-known culture 
of censorship. This leads me to lastly speak about very quickly that the contents of social construct within us in the interest of our own individuation purposes must undergo a serious review from the rules of the religions of our forefathers to familial traditions and beliefs to personal codes of conduct uh, likes and dislikes. We need to tear those that do not serve our will to actualize ourselves out from the root. That would be the egoic tree that's growing out of the ground. We need to, to, take, to chop that thing down to the root. Yeah, there are some parts of that tree that we need to use in order to have some point of reference, but we need to, to really look at that tree for what it is and chop it down chop it ch chop chop it ch chop it down to where the unusable and the the withered and dead and 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 weed like qualities of it don't destroy that which we can learn that can lead us to wholeness you see what i'm saying and um that's 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 very very that that's an imperative thing i mean it's imperative that that must be done and um, if we don't do it, we're, we're, we're going to bring a lot of error into that which we could know. You see? So, okay, so what may stop us from doing that? Number one, it requires work. A lot of people are scared of doing the work. They're lazy. Self-examination. Doing so may cause us to not be accepted and fall short of the group's expectations. We may suffer a slight to our self-esteem, which I have come to find is a byproduct of the illusion of the societal togetherness we only think we share with another. So it's something, I mean, we are all one, right? But the thing is, is because of the ego and because of what we think we know and this is what it is and my side over here, your side over there. and Well, this is how we were raised up. This is how we were taught. And, you know, this is this is just how it is. You know what I mean? Because of that type of ideology and the history and the and what we think that that is the sum and bonum of knowledge of, you know, that 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 that's that tree. That's that tree. That's that. That that. That's that. Uh, um, that's that subjective understanding. That subjective knowledge that also leads to the flame, which shows us what we desire, and we go towards what we desire, and we 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 tend to think that that's just the way it should go, and it's like no, you know, uh, uh, the that 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 negative uh, uh, that that the, the the ego tree needs to be trimmed and that that gets into the idea of the eighth picture of the rosarian philosophorum um if if we go into some of the amplifications of the the eighth picture which i can't do here due to the time um but it gets into chopping down the altars of our fathers chopping down those old altars getting a ego self access, linking to something higher, learning of something higher and noticing that we must move forward towards individuation and unity with that higher being, that's higher self. And that in order to do so, we have to stage a revolt against the old thoughts, the old ways of being, the old uh, ideology, the old thou shouts, the old uh, uh, status quo that needs to be uprooted in order to gain any progress, in order to gain any movement towards uh, the goal. You see what I'm saying? Um, for instance, and a, 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 for instance that touches directly on this exotericism, for instance, uh, churches that you can go to where they give you a sense of self through what they've been doing for so many hundreds of years and still don't know the contents of their own books, right? Um, 
they'll tell you that everybody else is wrong. Oh, they're going to hell. They're demons, liars. They're worshiping Satan or whatever else. You know, you know, there, there are other there are other religions that that do that and say, oh, their religion is wrong or their belief is wrong. Well, if you take the idols down that they have caused you to through your ego worship the autonomous ego holds on to those things worships them and thinks that they're the this is it this is it and nothing else you know and you live your life out of it you tear others down in their life and in and, and in their passion and in in, in in their will you you trample on others will because you just only think you're right right that that's the problem and not until we uproot those old ideologies and also look at yeah there's poison there but there's also uh an esoteric truth when we can get to the esoteric truth by taking out the poison by chopping that tree down by pruning that tree but also chopping it down in in such a way where you know it's not going to grow like like uh, 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 in, in into the the choking restricting weed that it has been and then that has become we won't come to the truth unless we do that you know and I, and a lot of times it's because we think we know it all and Nobody can tell us anything different, and this is just only the way it is. And we become, we become like 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 uh, little dictators, uh, little warriors for God, and God doesn't need us to fight His battles. You know what I mean? We become just like those uh, those those uh, Hebrews in in the Old Testament that killed off countless kids and women and people that were even of their own racial category just because they spoke a different dialect and because God told us to do it. We become just like them. And uh, to destroy Gnosis, to destroy true knowledge, to destroy and to uh, vilify those that have Gnosis within their uh, 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 beliefs, within their traditions, is uh, I believe one of the greatest crimes that one can can literally commit. You know, it's 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 uh it's like spitting in the face, if you will, of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like uh, slapping Sophia, the goddess of wisdom, in the face. You know, so um, with that. I'm going to close this lecture because we've touched on everything. This is a lecture as far as those columns that I read. If you go back into those columns, you look at, at, at what was stated. You look at some of the brief insights that I've given. Maybe you pause it. Maybe you stop. Maybe you, you listen to the uh, correspondences that were read because those are lists of correspondences, right? And gain from those lists of correspondences uh, an understanding of what those things are in your psyche. Um, once you've seen, as we've we've uh, repeatedly spoken about um, deity, a deity, for instance, uh, Pangu, um, that juxtaposes with, because Pangu basically is Wu Ji becoming the Tao, and is uh, very representative of Abraxas containing the opposites within itself. You see what I'm saying? If we can take this idea and apply it to the way that we see things in life and others in ourselves, and uh, the things around us and uh, even within our amassing of esoteric knowledge, if we do not separate one system from another and uh, uh, oh, this is this. No, but this is this over here, and that is that. Like this, this doesn't go with this. This is a link with this. If we can get the idea that everything is united and linked into one body, from the many into the more simple, and from the simple into the one. If we can see that in the knowledge that we are amassing in studies within Gnosticism, uh, within alchemy, within tarot, 
within uh, uh, the ideas of uh, even the Norse religions of Odinism, the Elder Fathar, the Yggdrasil Igras, Igras, tree, um, within uh, um, Kabbalah, I don't know if I stated that. Um, if we can look at all these traditions and, and look at even the exoteric traditions, the Bible, the Quran, um, the Vedas, um, if we look at the things that are said in there and we juxtapose the information, we will, once again, like I've stated a long time before, we'll get a lattice network, a lattice framework that is like a, a net that as you continue to layer them one on top of the other, the net becomes more fine, more fine. You go and throw it out, you're able to catch more fine, more intricate specimen that you can place in your gallery and that you can say this one is just like this one. They all have the same type of body, the thorax, the abdomen, the legs, the way that the segments are on the legs. This shows me that these species of insects or whatever are are self-similar across the board you you start to see the self-similarity within certain species and then you can say well this is of this type of grade this is of this type of grade because an insect is not a mammal but they are all animals but they 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 are built for different purposes they're built for different things yet they're all animals of some degree of some nature you see what i'm saying you're able to 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 use the tree of life if you will right which is your own subjective knowledge to gain information that allows you to go more towards what it is that you desire if your desire is that for divinity if your desire is that for uh just carnality or whatever you will not even you won't even begin to build a lattice you will not even be able to, to, to uh, I mean, you, you, you're, you're not going to pass go. You're not going to collect $100. Your life is the monopoly at this point, if that is the case. But for those that are moving towards individuality, for those that are uh, taking the steps necessary and are uh, carefully, painstakingly with... Uh, a fear, respect towards it, trembling, not being scared, but with caref with a careful hand doing this work, you will achieve the goal. You will achieve the goal. I was uh, doing some some cumulative review of a lot of the growth that I've done and, and what has seemed like such a long time for some of the leaps and bounds that I've, I've received. I, I look back, I said, wow, you know, a lot of these leaps and bounds, it hasn't really been that long and it's it's continued going up. And when I seem to hit a, a, a brick in the road, a rock in the road, a, a wall, that wall, the, the heaviness and the weight always indicates a bigger breakthrough on the other side, you know? And there's, there's, there's such a, there's such a, a, a guiding hand on uh, on this path, you know, and uh, I just my, my biggest hope is just to share that with individuals such as yourself. You watching this now, if uh, you've been enriched by this project here or any of the other projects that I've, uh, I've put on this page in the form of lectures, uh, short tutorials or whatever, please give a like, please give a subscribe, please share this information with somebody else that may benefit from it. Um, and with that, thank you again for your time. And until next time, be blessed. Mm -hmm.